association with with Govardhan Hill and his uh, some of his pastimes and glories. Um, he's a obviously a super cool personality in our in our tradition, and um, so we'll I guess we'll start with some invocation and blessing prayers. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gananjana Salakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Jainatas Mai Shri Guru Venamaha Sadam Tuk Palasara Nitya Rasikam Ham Sam Vilasat Nakam Odarya Kya Sudama Sevaka Danam Vishramba Bhakti Pradam Yachayukti Vichakshanam Dvagavidu Vaisista Satya Sada Pande Ham Chaparari Namaka Yatim Sri Bhakti Vedantinam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Ram Rama Hare Hare Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Tvise Namaha Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha, Jagadataya Krishnaya, Govindaya Namo Namaha. He Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu, Jagatpate, Gopesha, Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostate, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Radhe Vrindavanishvari, Rishabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. So, so nice to see all of you. I had a nice week. I got to visit with some devotees on a couple of different occasions. And just briefly, I've been doing a lot. Of, I'm starting a big construction project. So I, um, I got a, a large wood order to make a timber frame shed, 12 feet by 12 feet, or whatever other freedom units you have over other places in the world. So three meters by three meters or something. Um, so I got to see some other devotees in the in the course of um, borrowing a trailer from a friend. And then I got to see Krishna Chaitanya for a few minutes and visit with him and see their cows and um, do a little service there. And he and I were talking, I'll just share with you briefly um, something about our discussion. We were talking about the glories of bhakti and how it's, it's so nice because um, bhakti is a, is such a powerful path. It's such a, a big path that it doesn't, require certain things of us like other paths might require um and uh so we talked a little bit about the the path of karma and how we're we're not really qualified for the path of karma as devotees in some ways because our faith isn't there in order to tread any path one has to believe that the outcome of that path will be the results that that give one happiness or lasting peace or contentment or prosperity, whatever it might be. Um, so as devotees, we, we, have a we have a little faith, obviously. We're, if we, we have a little faith that we hope that, you know, that good things will happen to us in that karmic sense, but we don't, we don't, um, we don't pursue a, a path of uh, acquisition or attainment or uh, worship of the demigods in, in hopes of getting a good son or something like that. Um, and we also, because um, we, we don't necessarily think that we're going to live forever, nor do we think that the things that of this world are going to last forever, and uh, in this body anyway. Other 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 than that, we obviously believe we'll live forever. And um, so we're uh, not necessarily qualified for the path of karma, nor are we necessarily um, qualified to be renunciates. Most of us aren't naturally renunciates. We're not walking away from life. We like to live under some warm house with a, a good roof. And we're not like Golavecha Sridhar living in a rundown shack with a, you know, just a, a very few possessions. Nor does that even like really sound very interesting or amusing to me. Like the karma, like having some stuff sounds a little bit interesting. Being a renunciate, it doesn't even sound good to me. Um, but um, anyway, um, or being celibate, not, it's not good for me. I, after my, I was married before and was divorced and went to live in Saragrahi and I was there for more than a year and it became very clear I, being a, a renunciate is not, is not my path. I was, didn't have 
the peace of mind or, or sobriety to stay well situated in, in that situation. It's not good for me. So I'm not, not qualified for that either. But um, it's not, neither of those are necessary because the, power, the path of bhakti is so strong. So um, anyway, we're, just, we're, we're fortunate to, to be on the bhakti path. And to not and to not have um, some other ideas in mind. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. I think we'll start today. Um, we'll we'll talk a little bit about the. We'll meet up with our hero, Lord Chaitanya, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the. In the Anchalila, it's where this story appears. The uh, Anchalila, chapter six, Lord Chaitanya meets Raghunath Das Goswami. Um, just a few. So anyway, I lost my place. So I'll just have to tell you the story. So uh, Raghunath Das was the son of Govardhan. And Govardhan was a Majumadar, uh, which means he was a, a big landholder who uh, had, had quite a lot of money. And his brother was Hiranya. And they lived together in Navadweep in Mayapur. And um, and um, they were like close friends with Nilambar Chakravarti, who's Lord Chaitanya's grandfather. And so when Lord Chaitanya was very small, you think back, uh, it makes me think about the, I think it's in this pastime where there's a traveling Brahmana and he comes, this is a story from Chaitanya Bhagavat, where a Brahman comes and, it, and he says, um, I'd like to cook some things and offer them and, Little Nimai Pandit is toddling around and he comes out and he eats the offering that the Brahmin has made before it's offered to the deity. And then so the uh, Vishvarup comes out and convinces the Brahmin to cook again. And, and then um, so he does. And then little Nimai toddles back out and he, um, he eats the offering before it's offered to the deity again. And um, and I think Jagannath Mishra says something like, you should, we, do, we don't want him to eat the offering again. We're, we're not making it easy on this nice Brahmin who's staying with us. So take him to the neighbor's house. And I always think about the neighbor's house uh, might be this person, Govardhan and Hiranya. Uh, and when Nimai was also still like a little toddler, it just happened that when it was an Ikadasi day. And he said, I think I want to eat the prasadam that Govardhan and Hiranya are cooking, you know, that he wouldn't like, it was sort of a, how would he have known that they were making something, but it turns out he was correct. They were making a big offering. So this Govardhan is the father of Raghunath Das. And Raghunath Das is about the same age as Lord Chaitanya. And so I can't help but think like in the, in such a village life that Raghunath Das and Nimai Pandit must, they, they would have known about each other. I would think, um, but he doesn't necessarily appear in a prominent way in the story in, until the Anchalila. So um, a little bit is known about his background, of course, that he was married and he was, um, but he wasn't like necessarily happy at home and he kept running away and he would try to get to Lord Chaitanya and then uh, Govardhan and Raghunath Das's mother they would send people to come after him and try to collect him and they would um, try to bring him back. And his mother, this happened so many times, they would send their guards and Raghunath Das was brought home. And his mother said, what you should do, just do is you should just tie him up. And Govardhan was a little more sober. And he said, well, I don't think it would be very good if we tie our son up. Um, so he's compelled by something stronger. He has a wife who's as beautiful as an angel. He has, he comes from a family with lots of money and it's not, that doesn't persuade him to stay home. Clearly he's compelled by something higher. And I think our efforts to tie him up and keep him here are going to be futile. 
Um, so eventually, Lord, G uh, excuse me, uh, Raghunath Das leaves, and he. This is later in the story. Um, so he he walks from. I'm assuming from there in Mayapur, where they're from. It doesn't clearly say, but he walked from Mayapur to Jagannath Puri, um, which is not too great a distance, like Mother Sachi said, like two rooms in the same house. Um, but I think he had to walk for about two weeks, maybe 12 days, and he was fasting for part of that time, and he wasn't always clean. Um, and then... Um, Let's see if I can find this bit. So it's a Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes. He reached Jagannath Puri in 12 days, but could eat only for three days on the way. When Raghunath Das met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord was sitting with his companions headed by Svarup Damodar. And staying at a distant place in the courtyard, he fell down to offer obeisances. And then Mukunda Dat said, here is Raghunath. Um, as soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard these words, he immediately welcomed Raghunath Das. Come here, he said. And Raghunath Das then clasped the lotus feet of the Lord. But the Lord stood up and embraced him out of his causeless mercy. And seeing Lord Chaitanya's mercy on Raghunath Das, Varuk Damodar, um, stood up and embraced him as well. Lord Chaitanya said, um, the mercy of Lord Krishna is stronger than anything else. Therefore, the Lord has delivered you from the ditch of materialistic life, which is like a hole into which people pass stool. So it's important. Uh, one, one point that I want to want to bring out just as a point for practitioners is sometimes we get a little distracted in our practice and we think that um, maybe we aren't making good progress for some reason. But it's important to remember, at least intellectually, so we may not always feel this, but we wanna apply this at least with our intelligence that the mercy of Lord Krishna is stronger than anything else. It's stronger than our, uh, that our sinful activities, it's stronger than our material desires. It may even be stronger than our offenses. It may be stronger than, even if we were to offend another Vaishnava, Krishna's mercy may be stronger than that. Um, still, we, we always want to safeguard against making those kind of offenses. Um, but it's important to remember that the mercy of Krishna is stronger than other things. So it's interesting what Krishna Das Kaviraj says here. He says, Raghunath Das answered within his mind, about Lord Chaitanya saying about his departure from material life. I do not know who Krishna is. I simply know that your mercy, oh my Lord, has saved me from my family life. And Lord Chaitanya says, your, your father, Govardhan, and your uncle, Hiranya, they're, they're like younger brothers of my grandfather, Nilambar Chakravarti. And so your father and uncle, they're like my grandfathers too. And uh, so he says something interesting. My dear Raghunath, uh, your father and his elder brother are just like worms in stool in the ditch of material enjoyment for the great disease of the poison of material enjoyment is what they consider happiness. So we've all heard this, uh, this idea about a worm in stool. And you know, if you've ever tried to take a worm out of the stool, you can see how he'll he or she will fight you to get back into the stool. They don't want to be taken from the stool. But um, I'll read this purport because it gives us a little more. We, we use it sometimes in the, maybe in the wider community, and maybe we are, ourselves have used this term a little loosely. And Prabhupada's purport sheds a little more light on what this, what it, what this term means. When a man is attached to material enjoyment, he is attached to many miserable conditions, but nevertheless, he accepts his condemned position as one of happiness. Since enjoyment is so strong for such a person that he cannot give it up, exactly as a worm in stool cannot give up the stool. From the spiritual point of view, when a person is too absorbed in material enjoyment, he is exactly like a worm in stool. Although such a position is utterly miserable to the eyes of liberated souls, 
the materialistic enjoyer is greatly attached to it. So I, I've certainly felt that for myself at times. And sometimes I think it's, um, anyway, just, just an interesting concept to be like, sometimes we might refer to ourselves in that way, but it's important to, to have a realistic mindset about the nature of where we are um, as far as we are some kind of a devotee. We're not just materialistic people or we're not, we're certainly not just devotees either. We're also materialistically inclined. Um, but Krishna's mercy is stronger than everything else. So um, also when I, when I read this purport, I can't help but think about Indra as long as we're in the, in the mode of talking about Govardhan Hill, we have to talk, haven't talked anything about Indra. We talked a little bit about Madhavendra Puri, and we talked about his Anukut pastimes there at Govardhan Hill, and then we talked about Lord Chaitanya and, um, and his associates, Balabhadra Bhattacharya and the Sanodiya Brahman and the other unnamed Brahmana, and their journey through Vrindavan and their, uh, their trip to Govardhan Hill. Um, but so far we, ha we haven't talked about Krishna and Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj and, and Lord Indra um, and Iravata. We haven't spoken about those personalities at all, but I can't help but think about um, Lord Indra when I think about this worm in stool story, uh, because there's a pastime about Indra um, where he becomes a pig and he's hanging out in his pig life and he's hanging out with his pig wives and um, and he's hanging out, and he's quite happy there. He's got it good. Someone's feeding him, and he's got lots of things to eat. And he's hanging out, and uh, eventually, uh, it it turns out it's not very good. The things aren't going well in heaven, and so Lord Brahma has to come down, and he says, "Indra, you're uh, you're needed back in heaven. You you actually have a, a much more important job to do, and I wish you would come and take care of your responsibilities in heaven." And Indra says, "No, no, I'm I'm quite happy being a pig here." And Lord Brahma has to re-emphasize for him that it's important that you not be <laughs> this pig. You have things to do in heaven, so please assume your duties there. Um, so let's see. So Guru Maharaj has often told this story where Lord Chaitanya entrusted uh, the care of Raghunath Das to Svarup Damodar, and he became known as Svarupera Raghu. And Lord Chaitanya says something to the effect of, well, now we have three Raghunaths in our company. We have Raghunath Vaidya, and we have Raghunath Bhatta, who's another famous of the six Goswamis, the famous cook. And now we have Raghunath Das, who's at Svarup era Raghu. Excuse me, my aunt calling. So, um, so we have Svarup era Raghu. And, um, and so Svarup Damodar, of course, embraced Raghunath Das. And um, let's see. Lord Chaitanya, of course, he, he's been traveling for some time, and he says, you should go and bathe in the sea, and then um, get cleaned up, and then go and see the, the, the deity at the Jagannath temple, and then come back and have prasadam. So Govinda, um, who's Lord Chaitanya's god brother, the disciple of Ishvara Puri, is bringing uh, Raghunath Das um, some foodstuffs for several days, for many days. And um, forgive me. So anyway, the, there's several stories about about Raghunath Das um, and how he got his prasadam. His father Govardhan was sending was sending money, and for a long time he was accepting that money and inviting Lord Chaitanya and so many sannyasi disciples to come and eat there. And then he, sometime later, he um, he stopped he stopped accepting that money. And then he was um, 
standing at the Sima Dwar, the, the lion gate at the Jagannath Puri temple, and he was accepting alms there. And then he he stopped, eventually stopped, um, stopped accepting alms there. And then he was um, he was only taking the the remnants of rice that had been thrown out in the pasture and where the cows are. And he was taking that rice. Um, so um, uh, so Raghunath Das, it says here, Krishna Das describes, Krishna Das never even spoke a word before Lord Chaitanya. Instead, he informed Lord Chaitanya of his desires through Svarup Damodar. So as we may have heard, Raghunath Das um, had wanted some personal instruction from Lord Chaitanya. Um, and Lord Chaitanya said, I've, I've entrusted you to Svarup Damodar. And in so many ways, Lord Chaitanya himself has entrusted his own spiritual life to Svarup Damodar. So he said, I don't, don't think I've shortchanged you or, or not given you everything. I've given you, I've entrusted you to a, a very good person. Um, so um, anyway, Raghunath Das nevertheless wanted some personal instruction. So Svarup Damodar went before Lord Chaitanya and said, Raghunath Das would like to tell you that he doesn't know what the purpose of his life is, and he would like some personal instruction from you. And, um, and he said, um, so Lord Chaitanya says, Gramya kata na sunibe, gramya varta na kohibe, bala na kaibe, ara bala na paribe. So he says, don't speak Gramya Kata. So Kata means a talk and Gramya means like the village. So don't hear village talk and don't talk about the village talk and don't eat fancy food and don't dress very nicely. So we may have heard from, from some of our mentors that in the modern term that might be like, don't spend too much time on Facebook or don't spend too much time on Instagram and don't spend too much time watching the news. I must confess like uh, this week in America, we have, unfortunately we have some very strange cases in the news, these homicide cases, one in Wisconsin and another in Georgia, they're very high profile cases and they're not a, not a good look for America. But anyway, we, we live in a strange time and I, unfortunately, it's caught my attention some. I haven't followed it too closely, but I've read several headlines. So Lord Chaitanya is advising against this. Don't read the headlines about what's happening in Kenosha. Don't read the headlines about what's happening. Um, and also, it's important to, to think like there's also another kind of Gramyakata. So in, in, the, in Nandagram, they're always having a kata. They're always talking about Krishna. So that's the kind of, on the, on the flip side, the vidis and nishedas. So on the flip side, the do's and the do nots. Don't, don't talk about village, don't talk about village kata. And on the other side, you should, you should talk about the village kata. So he says also, do not expect honor, but offer all respect to others. Always chant the holy name of Krishna. And within your mind, render service to Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. And so, um, he says, I've now, I've briefly given you my instructions and now you'll get the rest from Swarup Damodar. And he also said another thing, Trinada pi sunichena, tarora pi sahisnuna, amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Um, you should think of yourself as being lower than a blade of grass and you should be more tolerant than a tree, and you should not expect personal honor and respect, and you should be ready to offer all respect to others. And in that state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So it's a good goal um, to give up the desire for honor. It's easy to go along and think, think uh, I feel very peaceful and happy until someone, maybe somebody at work, or maybe somebody on the street, and they give you a little trouble, and your ego gets inflamed, and oh, now I'm expecting honor. Here I go, expecting honor. Somebody cut me off. They took my parking space. Don't they know who I am? I'm one of the Vaishnavas. I'm a very important person. And they took my space. So I have to, have to always try.
try to curb the mind and allow our heart to be cleansed by the chanting of the holy name and the Grammy Kata of Krishna Kata. And um, we make, gradually make progress. Um, so I wanted to bring out this as a, as a nice point. We talked a little bit, um, Lord Chaitanya encourages Raghunath Das to um, serve Radha and Krishna within his mind. So there's a, this next verse. It says, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again entrusted him to Svarup Damodar. Thus Raghunath Das rendered very confidential service with Svarup Damodar Goswami. And the, the term here is Antaranga Seva. And uh, Prabhupada translates Antaranga Seva as very confidential. So that would be the, the opposite of the Bahiranga, which is like the external energy, the, bah, the, the three Bahs, the externals. And so here we have the Antaranga Seva, and it refers to service performed in one's spiritual body. This is the purport. Svarup Damodar Goswami uh, was formerly Lalita Devi, and Raghunath Das Goswami, who was among his assistants, now also began to serve Radha and Krishna within his mind. So this is this is very very lofty. Something that we have to look forward to in our future, and something that we referred to in our in our last class about Lord Chaitanya um, running toward the Chataka Parvata and thinking it to be Govardhan Hill and entering into what Guru Maharaj called a faint. So he goes into his internal consciousness. And um, so we see Raghunath Das is doing a similar thing. He's doing this Antaranga Seva, um, following one of these Gopi group leaders, it sounds like Lalita Devi, Svarup Damodar. And um, so anyway, the, the very highly esoteric stuff, and a great mystery, and which will be revealed to us uh, at some at some point in time in our devotional lives. And um, so, so Raghunath Das stayed there for some time and he witnessed Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. He saw the dancing at Jagannath, uh, Jagannath Rathiatra and he met all the devotees. It says, it says he met Advaita Acharya. You would think he would have met Advaita Acharya back in the day in Mayapur. Um, and then a long talk with, um, with Shivananda Sain about the, the way Govardhan had tried to uh, sin for him and bring him back. And then after some years, so um, Lord Chaitanya was very pleased with Raghunath Das. And um, so it says that some years, a few years prior, Lord Chaitanya had received a Govardhan Shila from uh, one devotee who had come from Vrindavan, Shankarananda uh, Sarasvati. He had returned from Vrindavan and brought a Govardhan Shila. Uh, and it's translated here, a, and a garland of conch shells. Um, but Guru Maharaj usually talks about this as a Gunjamala. And it appears in the Bengali as Gunjamala, but it's translated as conch shell. So they're a, they're a little different. Um, if you're unfamiliar, I think I got a picture. If I can get it to focus. So we have we have some. Oh mercy, it's not going to focus. Anyway, it's a picture of Gunjamala. So they're like a red and white berries. There's another. I can't make it focus. Um, but they're they're like red and black. And the entire plant is poison, um, but they're um, sometimes they're strung on a necklace, and they're often worshipped together: the Govardhan Shila and the Gunjamala, or this garland of conch shells. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to ask Guru Maharaj uh, what's the distinction? Why? How is that? How are we to understand? Um, so Lord Chaitanya, uh, he gave this. Um, he had worshipped these. Um, He'd worshipped this Govardhan Shila for, for two or three years. And um, beautiful description. It says, uh, the Lord would put the stone to his heart or sometimes to his eyes. And sometimes he would smell the stone and sometimes he would place it on his head. And the stone from Govardhan was always moist with his tears. And Lord Chaitanya would say, this stone is directly the body of Lord Krishna. So for three years, he worshipped it. 
And then after he was greatly satisfied with the, the character and the person of Raghunath Das, then he, he gave that Govardhan Shila and that garland of Gunja berries um, to Raghunath Das. And he gave him some more instruction. Worship this stone in the mode of goodness like a perfect Brahmin, for by such worship you will surely attain ecstatic love for Lord Krishna without delay. And then he gave him some specific instructions about worshiping the uh, Govardhan Shila with, with water and Tulsi flowers. Just so we have to, of course, we think about Advaita Acharya worshiping his um, Kali Gandaki Shilas with uh, Tulsi and Gangajal. And, um, and then Svarup Damodar gave Raghunath Das two cloths, each about six inches long, a wooden platform, and a jug in which to keep the water. Um, and so after, um, after some time, Raghunath Das had, had worshipped the Govardhan Shila, and he had a, a realization. He said that um, he had understood by that that um, Lord Chaitanya had given him a place at the Govardhan Hill, and he had also placed him in the camp of Srimati Radharani by giving him the Gunjamala. So um, when we hear such things, you can't help but think of Gopakumar. And, um, and Gopakumar had been, he had a similar realization. He had made it all the way through so many realms. And, um, and then he arrived in Vrindavan. And he was there at breakfast, and Radharani had prepared so many sweets. And so he, um, so Krishna received a, a special plate of ladus, and he took a bite and made a bad face, and he put it back down, and he passed that ladu to uh, Gopakumar. And Gopakumar, by, by that action, Gopakumar could understand that Lord Chaitanya had given him a, a specific station and a specific assignment. So let's see. Okay, so in that way, um, Raghunath Das had received this, um, a place at Govardhan Hill and um, So I want to bring this. Maybe, maybe some of you follow um, Indra Jumnaswamy on Instagram. He's always he's traveling in Vrindavan right now, and the other day he went to this place. Um, it's a forest of kadamba trees. It's all so many kadamba trees, and um, there are a few sadhus that are there, and there are a few agricultural fields that are around. But the that property is owned by Jiva Goswami, and um, he was just he was standing there and making a picture and giving some description of what goes on there and the history of the place and um, and he so Jiva Goswami was living there and he was going to serve Rupa Goswami some distance away at Terakadamba and Rupa Goswami you know of course Jiva Goswami wanted to be there. Uh, serving Rupa Goswami, learning from Rupa Goswami. Um, but Rupa Goswami was very determined to, to ride and do his meditation. So Jiva Goswami wasn't far away in this, in this forest of Kadamba flowers, and he would go every day to Tara Kadamba and do some service for Rupa Goswami. But um, so I'll read this verse. It's a famous verse from Upadesha Amrita. The holy place known as Mathura is spiritually superior to Vaikuntha, the transcendental world, because the Lord appeared there, superior to Maturapuri is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Rasalila pastimes. Some of you may have gotten to dive into some of Ashram Maharaja's recent classes on Rasalila. They're pretty nice. And superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes. And above all, the super excellent Sri Radha Kun stands supreme. For it is over flooded with the ambrosial nectarian prema of the Lord of Gokul, Sri Krishna. Where then is that intelligent person 
who is unwilling to serve this divine Radhakund, which is situated at the foot of Govardhan Hill. So we have a, an escalating uh, gradation of holy places uh, described by Rupa Goswami. So I want to I want to go into something that was written by Raghunath Das, um, and it's a I guess it's a Dasakam, not an Astakam. It's ten verses. I don't know how you say it. Do you have any Sanskrit scholars? What's a what a what's a what do you call a ten verse poem? Dasakam. Dasakam. Okay, I had a lucky guess. So, um, I'll read a little bit of this, and we'll. Um, it's a. It's written in a meter called Malini, and I, I I looked it up on YouTube this morning. I think it's fifteen syllables, and there's no way that I could present it. I, I've seen uh, Padmanabha Maharaj. He'll sometimes give the meter or sing these verses in a in the beautiful meter. I'm not going to try that. Um, I will. I will read you the the English, and we'll go through all of the verses, and then I'll. I'll I'll give you a little commentary for what that's worth. Um, the, the English title is 10 Appeals for Residents Near Govardhan. Uh, Govardhan Vas Prarthana Dasakam. This is by Raghunath Dasko Swami with a commentary uh, by Srila Baladevi Yabushan. Having appeared like an umbrella held in the hand of your own master Krishna, you destroyed the pride of Indra who had become emboldened due to his intoxicated nature and had thus turned into an arrogant person. You are the king of all incomparably beautiful, wide mountains, and you are very dear to me. O Govardhan, please give me permanent residence near you. So in our, in our Vaishnava tradition, um, unless we're instructed for some particular reason, like Madhavendra Puri, uh, to walk on Govardhan Hill. We don't walk on the hill. Uh, we circumambulate the hill. Has anyone been? I've not been. Oh, good. Um, so maybe one day I get to go there. Until then, I have to, I have to meditate on it. Um, so we don't walk on the hill. So we're, he's praying for a residence near Govardhan. And... Um, So there's a there's an interesting Sanskrit term, and if you'll all forgive me, um, we'll we'll delve a little deeper into the the grammar and the poetry of this verse. It says the term "may" uh, to me appears once in the verse, but is connected to two terms, and then we have a a further illustration about the nature of Vaishnav poetry. This, according to the Kakakshi nyaya um, is a poetic term, which means the eye of the crow. So somehow a crow has an eye that works in between the left and right eyes. Um, and it basically how it works in this poetry is that this um, may means that he is, it goes with the goes with two terms. You are dear to me and give residence at this place to me. So I thought it was interesting. This third eye of the crow, Kakaksi Nyaya, the eye of the crow. Um, and then Raghunath Das, it's a very, this is an interesting meditation. And, um, and Raghunath Das is, is um, giving a, or Balade Vidyabhushan maybe is giving us a, a deeper look into Raghunath Das's internal meditation. So there's a dialogue that goes on in the mind of Raghunath Das, and he's having a dialogue with Govardhan. And in this dialogue, Govardhan is maybe a little reluctant or wanting to probe a little further as to why Raghunath Das uh, should have a residence near Govardhan. Um, so Raghunath Das says, please give me a residence near to you. And Govardhan says, there are many hills nearby giving up residence near them, why do you desire a residence near me? And in reply to this, Raghunath Das says, you are the king of all these mountains. And he says that 
you were lifted by Krishna. You, you, you become special. You're a devotee of Krishna and you're also lifted by Krishna. So he's desiring a residence there for that reason. Um, and then Giri Raj asks, so there are, um, there are many places which are holy places in the Raj Mandal. Uh, why would you want to, why would you want to live so close to me? Um, so then he basically, or we have a repetition of the verse, um, acting as an umbrella, he destroyed the pride of Indra who had become emboldened due to his intoxicated nature and had thus turned into an arrogant person. So um, there's a reminder here from Bala David Yabushan that Krishna says, Mad Bhakta Puja Bhyadika, worship of my devotee is better than worship of me. And there we, we hear a lot about we hear a lot about that, the importance of worshiping devotees and honoring devotees and serving devotees, and how that's more uh, pleasing to Krishna than service to him. Um, I just started reading uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat, and I think in, in verse 8 of the first chapter, verse 9 of the first chapter, there are, there are several illustrations about the importance of serving the devotee as being superior to, um, to service to Krishna directly. And um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta has given several verses in, in uh in that commentary, of course, uh, the most famous being Shiva to Parvati. And Parvati asks, what's the best? And he says, it's best to be a servant of Krishna. And he thinks, oh, I'm a servant of Vishnu, of Shiva. So, and he said, but better than that is to be a servant of Krishna's servants. Um, anyway, we'll continue. Um, text two. In each and every one of your caves, the eternally youthful couple carries out excellent, intoxicating, amorous pastimes. If I reside near you, then you will guarantee that I will be able to witness these pastimes. O Govardhan, please give me permanent residence near you. So as we mentioned the other week, um, Govardhan towers, or at least towered over Vrindavan. And due to his height, he was able to witness all these different pastimes that were going on. So Raghunath Das is, is thinking, if I live there, then, then I'll also be able to be a witness to all these beautiful amorous pastimes between Radha and Krishna. Um, the next verse is text three. On your incomparable jewel-bedecked stone platforms that act as thrones, under your trees in various places, such as waterfalls and caves, and on even and uneven lands, you fully arrange various sports for your dear Krishna, along with his jovial friends and Balaram. That I am eagerly awaiting to witness. O oh, Govardhan, please give me permanent residence near you. So it's described in Chaitanya Bhagavat that all of the sporting games that are here in the world and more are games that are played by Krishna and the cowherd boys. And so some, some of these games, they probably require an even playing field and some you might can play on a slope. And um, I can't help but think about uh, these stone platforms. Um, it, I'm sure there are a lot of beautiful stones there at Govardhan Hill. And um, of course the deity of Gopal was installed on one of those stones by Madhavendra Puri. And also when, um, when Raghunath Das met Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda was sitting on a big stone. And you have to wonder, did Raghunath Das think about Krishna and Balaram sitting on these stones at Govardhan Hill when he saw such a thing? Text four. Having manifested the Sham of Adi, where was enacted the toll tax payment pastime of the eternally youthful couple who are like two personified oceans of conjugal mellow, you bring about immense joy to the assembly of the best of Rasika devotees. O Govardhan, please give me a permanent residence near you. So this Sham of Adi is a, is a Sheila that's there at the Govardhan Hill. 
which has the footprints of both Radha and Krishna. And this, I don't know the entire story, but the Guru Maharaj has, has described it several times. The, um, oh, I can't think of the name now, but where Krishna sets up a toll booth and he tries to uh, uh, take a tax from the gopis when they're, um, when they have some milk products. So a Don, beautiful. Donna Kaley. Don Kaley, thank you. Yeah, so the Don Kaley Leela. So in the course of the Don Kaley Leela, they're, they're both the, the footprints of both Radha and Krishna became impressed in this stone. So um, Raghunath Das says, it is replete with the radiance and fragrance uh, of Radha and Krishna. And by having darshan of this Shambhadi, the Rasika devotees feel immensely joyous and causes them to shout out chants of joy. And he said, and if I were able to live close to this Govardhan hill, then I could hear these shouts of joy. Uh, text five, having eagerly embraced your dear friend, the un incomparable object of love of Hari named Radha Kund around your neck, you secretly witness the amorous pastimes of the freshly youthful couple that are performed in a solitary place. I also desire to witness them. O Govardhan, please give me a permanent residence near you. Um, so Govardhan, the, the dialogue continues and Govardhan says, there are many places in my vicinity where exactly do you wish to reside permanently? So Jeev Goswami being the topmost philosopher of all the Gaudiya philosophers, he, he probably had some deep insight um, about the nature of Radha Kund, but he, would have, he could have also heard from Rupa Goswami in the, the verse that we, just, that we just read from Upadesh Amrita, that this Radha Kund is a very sacred place, even uh, on Govardhan Hill, you have a, a sacred place, Radha Kund, which is, of course, within the sacred place of Vrindavan, which, of course, which is in, within the sacred place of uh, the Mathura district. It's kind of like a, a knot on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's an old song. Um, so, text six. Through your patches of level ground, your waters, your grasses, and the shade of your trees, you wonderfully nourish Vardana, the cows go at every moment. Thus, O Govardhan, you affirm to the three worlds the appropriateness of your name. O Govardhan, please give me a permanent residence near you. So this was Krishna's logic um, when he was explaining to Nanda Maharaj why uh, they should worship Govardhan Hill rather than worship Indra, because the Govardhan Hill is supplying so many nice things supplying uh, grasses for the cows and fresh water and waterfalls, uh, so many fruits and roots and vegetables and leaves from the trees. Um, so Balade Vidyabhushan comments that Raghunath Das has asked for something very specific and very intimate. And in this text six that we just read, his, he sort of takes a step back and he's a little more reluctant to, to ask for something so specific. Baladev Yabushan says he's feeling a little, a little more humility and asking for something a little more general here. Um, so we'll go on text seven. While promptly protecting his village from the sustained attacks of Indra, the enemy of Agasura and Bakasura showed you great respect by creating a new shelter within you. O Govardhan, please give me a permanent residence near you. So in the dialogue, Govardhan says, whatever you have prayed for in this, in this previous verse can be attained simply by staying at any of the places in Vrindavan. And Raghunath Das argues, but in this place, when Krishna lifted you and you protected all the villagers of Vrindavan, 
a beautiful place was created underneath. And you sometimes I, I might think like, so if you pick up the bottom of a mountain, what would be there would just be dirt and rocks and maybe some tree roots. Um, but some commentators have said that there were a lot of there was a lot of a whole nother wonderful village underneath there and there were fields of barley and there were stone cellars that with bedecked with jewels that were illuminated and they could go down in these cellars and that the atmosphere underneath Govardhan Hill was actually really nice. Um, so Raghunath Das refers to this and he talks about um, So he talks about the, uh, basically he's talking about the attack from Indra. Um, so anyway, I'll go on. O king of mountains, from Sri Radhika's moonlike face was spoken your nectarian name, Hari Das Varya, the greatest among all the devotees of Hari. The Vedas clearly describe you as a brilliant new tilak decorating the land of Raja. O oh oh Govardhan, please give me a permanent residence near you. So go, the, four, the, the area of Vrindavan is described here as being five yojanas. And I believe that a yojana is eight miles. So the area of Vrindavan is about 40 square miles. And, um, and that area of Vrindavan depending on how you think about it, is, uh, is Krishna's own body or is manifest by Balaram. Balaram manifests the holy Dham there. Um, so Govardhan asks, again, so simply residing at any of these places in Vrindavan, um, why would you want to have a place, um, a place so close to me? And so, of course, um, Raghunath Das, being a servant of Swarup Damodar and being in the particular mood that he's in, seems natural for him to, to, um, to think about this verse of Srimati Radharani, uh, where she refers to um, Govardhan as Hari Das Varya. And Raghunath Das says, you are the greatest among the mountains. And the following words came from the moonlight mouth of Sri Radhika. Antayam Adrir Abala Haridas Varya. How amazing it is, dear friend, that this hill Govardhan is the best among the servants of Hari. Uh, text number nine. Imbued with friendly rasa for Radha and Krishna, along with their friends, you are an unparalleled giver of happiness to the groups of men, animals, and birds that take shelter of you, O Govardhan. Embracing me and considering me as one of your own, please give me a permanent residence near you. Text 10. By the causelessly merciful Sri Sachinandan, your dear object of love, I have been offered to you, even though I am a crooked pretender. Therefore, certainly, without considering my qualifications or disqualifications, O Govardhan, Please give me a permanent residence near you. Um, so the first two, the two words of, of this verse is nirupadi karuna, karunena, excuse me. So an, an upadi is a cause and near of course is a Sanskrit prefix that means without. Um, and so he's uh, with great humility, Raghunath Das is saying that for no particular reason, Lord Chaitanya has been profoundly merciful to me. And I'm not deserving of that mercy because of my own qualities and characteristics. And he's saying that Govardhan, you should, you are also so, a merciful personality. So there's not, a, there's not like a good reason that I should have your uh, permanent residence near you. Um, but you should, nonetheless, you should be merciful to me and grant me a permanent residence there. Um, so there's one, one final verse. One who diligently studies these 10 bhakti rasa bestowing verses of Sri Govardhan, 
the topmost among the various mountains in the world, attains residence here in this joyous place at once. Having attained such residence, such a soul quickly attains the jewel of the all auspicious service of the divine couple. And um, so, anyway, I think that's about all I have for today. And uh, so, maybe some of you, maybe those of you who've um, who've been to the Govardhan Hill would like to say something. I know some of you used to, Sakirati, you lived in Vrindavan for some time. And Shamananda, you said you've been. Maybe some others of you have been. Maybe you'd like to tell us uh, some of your own uh, pastimes at the at the Govardhan Hill. Are you I can hear you. <laughs> um, I can I can share a nice story. I was told by another devotee who had been at Govardhan, because I, uh, I feel like it's more, uh, how do you say? Uh, there's more of a point to his story than any story I could tell, I think. <laughs> um, because I asked him uh, on Govardhan Puja one time, I asked him, because he had been giving a class. So I asked if he, had, I asked just like you did, like if he had any, like memories from from Coverdan Hill, and he said he had been with um, a big group of devotees on Parikram, and uh, Iskon Parikram, and uh, there were at one point they they sat down to have prasadam, so there were like many rows of seats on the ground, and uh, this devotee had been praying to Govardhan to for humility. And uh, and then uh, when he went went to sit down for prasadam, he he saw a great spot like between two um, senior devotees, two, two Prabhupada disciples. So he's thinking, "Wow, I can sit there." So he sat down there, and then someone tapped him on the shoulder after after a couple of minutes and said, "Hey, like this row is is reserved for Prabhupada's disciples. <laughs> so get out." <laughs> so he had to like, change place. Nice. Um, I think one. I also have a, a story from from another devotee, and unfortunately, I forget this this guy's name. He was a super nice devotee that I met in Los Angeles, um, and he said that he, I'll tell the whole story. He, he had a, a great sense of humor, but he said that he um, he and his wife had been they were they had they were going to Vrindavan, and they were on the train, and that. Um, the train was so very crowded that it's like standing room only and it's hot and it's sticky and you're just shoulder to shoulder with other people. And he said it was actually so packed that they couldn't even get their things off at Vrindavan. And so they had to continue to go north on the train and they had to, they got off at um, Taj Mahal. So the, the dream in marble. So they had to get off at Taj Mahal and then make their way back down south to Vrindavan. And so uh, it, it was just a really long, hot day, and they got into Vrindavan, and they went to one of the street vendors, and they they ordered a, a drink. They got, an, like a, I think he said he got an orange soda, and he was just about to drink his orange soda, and he was so hot, and he was so thirsty, and he said, just at that moment, a bee came, and it flew up my nose and stung me on the inside of the nose. <laughs> So he said he had a really troubled trip getting into Vrindavan. And then, um, and then a few days later, they were going around Govardhan Hill and they had, something had happened and their time had gotten taken up and they had not left in the morning. And so they left in, later in the day and it was already hot. And, um, and it took them a long time to go around. And he said, um, they got like halfway around this long walk and it got dark. And he said the monkeys were so loud and these like the monkeys were just they have big voices and he said that they were they sounded like they were all around and he's like we we may not make it we may not make it back to the other side and he said well at, at least if we don't make it if we get eaten by these monkeys or something at least we died at Govardhan Hill so 
I wish I could remember his name. He's a nice guy. So um, anyway, really nice to be with all of you. And um, so um, last week, I, I assume everyone um, heard Guru Maharaja's response. I, I asked about uh, Lord Chaitanya uh, running to the Chataka Parvata and seeing it as Govardhan Hill. And so he, he talked all about that. He talked about um, Lord Chaitanya's own mood of tasting Radha Bhava and, um, and how he had become successful in that and that that's not something that, that we're striving for, not something that we're going to be able to attain. And, um, but he talked about how Lord Chaitanya had been engaged by those other gopikas in picking flowers for the divine couple and that how um, Lord Chaitanya um, had gone into that mood in his, what he called the faint. Um, and so he was tasting Manjari Baba there. So I thought that was really nice. That's a, a, a cool uh, end or a cool addition to, to hearing about that pastime to get some nectar like that from Guru Maharaj. So I have something in the chat here. Let's see. Gracias por la traducción. All right. De nada, Prabhu. You have to go on the English channel in order to hear Ananga Manjari. Okay. But it, it was just thank you for the translation. Okay. Mucho gusto. Solamente un poquito español. Lo siento. Okay. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you all for, for being here with us. And um, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, Guru Maharaj will be here and we can hear from him. Uh, Sri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Sri Raghunath Das Ki Jai. Sri Govardhan Hill Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Sri Mankanaram Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai.